So first things first, you do want to double check your units. Now, if you've selected your template appropriately, this is likely already set up. But just in case you didn't, you can always type in units, press enter, and just double check that this is the units you want to work with. I'm going to be working with millimeters today, so I'm happy with that. But you can always change it to feet and inches and so on. The next thing you want to do is set up your layers. So here is my layer properties manager. Uh, if it's not showing for you, all you have to do is type LA and it'll show back up. I've already set up a lot of different layers in this template, but essentially I'm setting up my layers where they use different colors. And because I'm going to be using a default plot style in AutoCAD, more on that in a minute, I've already set up them with appropriate line weights. Now this is in my um, CAD template that you can get on my shop, but essentially you just want to make sure you're using those really thick lines for anything that's kind of cut by the drawing plane and then using thinner lines as you get kind of more into the detail. Now, again, be organized with your layers, use consistent naming, um, because it will organize alphabetically, you can also use kind of prefixes to help group certain things together and make it e really easy to find the layer you want as you get to draw. All right, I'm going to dock this back over here. Now, the first thing you want to do is spend some time drawing your walls. Now, to do this, you first want to make sure you're on a appropriate walls layer. So I'm going to be using either the exterior walls layer or the interior walls layer and then use the line or polyline tool. Polyline tool is probably going to make your life a little bit easier to actually start drawing your lines according to the measurements of the space. Then use the offset tool to add thickness to these walls. Now we want to locate our doors and windows. So you can actually draw doors and windows from scratch. I would always recommend drawing them and then making them into a block if you're doing it that way. Or you can download kind of CAD blocks from the internet or using templates like mine and you have these kind of already ready to go. So for example, I'm going to use this door. So copy and let's paste it into the room. But I do want to make sure it's located where it needs to be according to the survey. So I'm going to select and move it off the wall. From there, I'm going to use the line tool to add in wall lines at the edge. Now I can select these lines and trim the opening. I'm going to repeat the same process for some windows. All right, now we want to add in some furniture. So again, draw these from scratch, create them into blocks, or use downloaded blocks from the internet or within a template. So I'm going to go ahead and pull some from the template itself. and draw in the ones you might need. And of course, you might have downloaded some from the internet. So if I go to this file that I have downloaded, so let's say we're gonna use a potted plant. So I'm gonna actually just grab this one. So copy and paste. And it's copied and pasted, but it's a bit kind of funky. So I'm going to actually scale it first. So scale and make it about half the size. And I'm going to put it on an appropriate layer. Now, because it's kind of a plant and it's decorative, I'm actually going to put it on a layer that's going to print gray 
just because I think it'll be a little bit better for the overall look of the, the design. But I am going to add a pot for the plant to sit in. All right, next up we wanna add in a few annotations and hatches. So I am gonna go into my annotation symbols and I'm just gonna add a little break line here. Now I also need to add in a threshold line for my door, just where my hatch for this flooring doesn't go all the way under. All right, so now we wanna add in a hatch for our flooring. So for this room, I'm gonna show it where there's say wood flooring underneath a, a large rug. All right, to draw the rug, I'm gonna go to the hatch layer and I'm just gonna draw an overall shape of the rug. And I'm going to move it into place. And from there, I'm going to offset it and fill in this area with a hatch. And let's do some editing. That works for me. I'm gonna delete the interior kind of edge of the rug for the time being. And now we wanna add in a hatch for our flooring. So I'm gonna go H, enter, let's hover, and click, 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 and click. And once that's added, choose an appropriate hatch. Now, I will say, if you haven't found the hatch that you want, you can always install one that's been downloaded from the internet. When you download pattern files, these are essentially going to be pat files, so .pat is the extension. And essentially, to install it within AutoCAD, you need to navigate to the support folder within the installation of AutoCAD. I'll link below to instructions on Autodesk on how to find this, depending on your installation. And then, just copy this file into that folder, and go back to AutoCAD, and you should have a new hatch installed down below. Now, you'll likely need to adjust various settings within it to make sure it looks correct. And once that's done, I'm gonna delete that final little line around the rug, and I think we're good to go. All right, the next thing we wanna do is to bring our drawing onto a layout so we can professionally present it to scale on a title block with annotations and so on. So to do this, I've gone to my layout one tab and I'm first gonna do page setup. Now from here, I like to make sure my page setup is set to DWG to PDF. So I'm always printing to PDF and then print, if you actually need to print a physical copy, print from the PDF. Um, it's just good practice to kind of make sure you have that record. And also checking the PDF on screen before you kind of go to the process of printing it is always helpful. Then I always like to choose one of the full bleed options. So it can be a full bleed, one of the A kind of, um, page sizes if you're kind of in Europe, or if you're in the US, it could be a full bleed of the arch sizes and so on. So you just wanna choose your relevant size, but again, choose that full bleed size. So I'm just gonna say, this is a fairly small space, so we're gonna do A3. From there, I just wanna make sure my scale is set to one to one, because I'm actually gonna adjust my scale in the viewport. Then I'm gonna go to plot style, and I use the monochrome. 
So this is a default plot style and basically it's going to print anything that I want to be printed in black. So all of these like index colors, so if it's a single kind of number did um, number code, it's going to print that in black. These where it's doing the gray of 140, 140, 140, those are those true colors and it's going to print those as actual gray. And I find this really helpful to kind of use. No matter what plot style you're using though, it might be that you have one set up via your kind of design studios kind of um, setup, I would always recommend ticking display plot styles. That means you're not going to see the technicolor version of your drawing, but you're actually going to see the black and white version that's going to look really similar to how you print. And everything else I'm actually okay with, so click OK. And now we have our new and improved layout. Now we still need to go into our drawing and actually get it ready to print. So I'm going to just expand this viewport and I'm actually going to put it on a viewport layer. So from there, go in, I'm going to zoom in onto my drawing, I'm going to turn off this grid down here, and let's set it to a relevant scale. Mm, that's a bit big. And this is going to be an odd scale, but it works for this particular demonstration. All right, double click on the outside. If I'm happy with that, maybe I want to do some double checking. I can actually go in and turn on my line weights to see kind of what that's going to look like. And, you know, see we have some variety there, which is always good to see. And if you don't have this option here, if you just click on this little icon here, turn on line weight with a tick mark, and then you have this toggle to kind of preview the line weight. And otherwise, I think we're all good here. Now, I do want to add in a title block. So again, you could draw a title block from scratch, or you can use a downloaded template. I'm going to use one of my templates. So I'm just going to take this one and bring it in with a copy and paste over here. And I'm actually going to make sure that's set to zero. There we go. And from there, all I want to do is kind of adjust my viewport where it's aligned. Maybe let's center the drawing a little bit. And once you're happy with the viewport in terms of scale and location, I would recommend locking it. And there we go. And if you have a logo that or an image file that is showing that border, I would always do image frame. Make sure it's set to zero. If it was already set to zero, set it to one and then set it back to zero and that will remove that frame. All right, I'm really happy with this. Now, obviously, then once you've created your drawing and you've gotten it ready to present, add in annotations, dimensions, etc. as necessary. So for example, I would want to add in a drawing title. You might want to add in some dimensions of the overall space. You might want to key in the key furnishings and put those in the notes section over here and so on. But ultimately, this gives you that foundation of a much more professionally presented floor plan drawing from AutoCAD using an efficient workflow. Now, that was a bit of a whirlwind. You might be wondering how to take your skills even further. If you want to master AutoCAD specifically for interior design projects, saving time, working more efficiently, and creating polished professional drawings, then check out my AutoCAD for Interior Designers course. I created it specifically for designers, and it's packed with step-by-step -step lessons, realistic project examples, and all the tips I wish I knew when I started. The link to the course is in the description below. And I'll see you in the next one.